Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Nams and this is my review for Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. Like with all my normal reviews, the graphics, sound, and gameplay will be separately scored, and then an overall score, which is not an average, will be given at the end of the review, which reflects my overall opinion of the game. Thank you. Where on earth did you come from? More importantly, where will you go? The visuals and performance of the Assassin's Creed series on console has become known for three things. Large, pretty environments, great textures and visuals in spite of those large environments, and crappy frame mates, which explains why the two former upsides were possible. Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation on Vita holds true to these three staples, for better or for worse. Visually, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation is a very pretty game. Although it runs at sub-native resolution on Vita, textures are still very detailed, real-time lighting is still impressive, and animations are taken straight out of the console game. Character models for the main characters and non-playable characters are both impressive given that this is an open-world game as well. The game supports real-time lighting, which really caught me off guard about how good it looks. The environments are also pretty. While not quite as large as the latest console entries, the world is big enough to get lost in, and there's multiple areas of the game to explore so it never really gets stale. Sadly, as mentioned before, like the console games, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation has frame rate issues. Unlike the console games, however, which hovered at a noticeable but completely manageable 25 frames per second, this game dips much lower than that. While in town, and surrounded by many people, the frame rate could dip into the mid-teens, which really affects gameplay. More than once, my jump timing has been completely thrown off by a dip in the frame rate, which really sucks. The massive frame rate issues combined with the fact that this game runs at sub-native resolution really put a dent in the performance side of the graphics score. Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation is pretty, but is definitely held back by these flaws. Still, there are very few Vita games which use the effects that this game does. Overall, the graphics get a 7.5 on 10. Listen, have you noticed any unusual activity on the bayou? <laughs> Other than ours, you mean? When fitting large disc-based game series into cartridges, some sacrifices have to be made. Usually these sacrifices are in things that people wouldn't notice or wouldn't miss that much. However, in Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, it seems that the primary sacrifice was made in the sound department. The sound quality in this game is just awful. Whether it's the voices, the music, or the sound effects, everything sounds compressed or muffled to the point of sounding like your speakers are stuffed with cotton. And this is a real shame too, since the music is actually excellent in this game. It fits the setting and tone of the game perfectly, it just sounds like absolute crap. The sound quality on the voices is equally bad, and is further brought down by the poor voice acting in this game. Aveline's voice actress did an okay job, but virtually everyone else in the game has acted very poorly. They sound like they are reading lines from a script, and almost all the accents in the game sound forced. There are also sound glitches for many of the battle sounds. The sounds from your weapons cut out far too often, or delay until after the moves are done, which makes for an awkward sound experience. It's rare that I ever encounter games which have dropped the ball this hard on the sound category. If a sequel is ever made for this game, it's pretty clear where they should put most of the resources into. Better recording equipment, less sound compression, and less sound glitches would have moved this score up to an average score, but given everything that's wrong with the sound, the sound for Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation gets a 4 out of 10 from me. For all intents and purposes, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation functionally mimics the console version in terms of gameplay. The mechanics are spot on, and everything from the climbing, to the combat, to the chases feel pitch perfect in this game. New mechanics include a mark and execute style touchscreen power up, which basically allows you to mark and automatically take out multiple opponents in a row if you charge the meter enough, and a new pickpocketing mechanic that uses the back touchpad. Both of these new additions work decently. The main new gameplay element which sets this game apart is the Persona system. Aveline can adopt three different Personas in this game. The Assassin Persona has access to all of her weapons and ability, but raises notoriety the fastest of the three classes. The Lady Persona has access to only basic equipment and is less mobile, but has the ability to charm opponents for stealth assassinations. The Slave Persona has access to some powerful equipment, full mobility, and the ability to blend in with other slaves or start riots as distractions. While it is indeed cool to have the ability to adopt different personas, the game often forces you into selecting one of them instead of giving you the option to pick the one you want for the mission, which would have been better. 
While the game does well in mimicking the gameplay mechanics of the console games, it falls flat on its face in terms of story presentation. Aveline's backstory, motives, and reasons behind her decisions are never really explored in depth, and the game often jumps several years without properly explaining what has happened. And this is extremely disappointing given the potential that Aveline has as a character. The story is definitely weaker than the console counterparts. One last downside to this game are the gimmicky touch and motion controls which are occasionally shoehorned in as minigames. I am not against touch and motion controls when they work. I found the touch and motion controls in Uncharted Golden Abyss to work great, but they simply don't work in this game. The holding the paper to the light to see the letters minigame, which was ripped directly off from Uncharted, just doesn't work half the time. I even had to restart once, and god damn was that tilting marble puzzle annoying. That said, there are only 4-5 to five instances in this game where you actually have to do these, so it's not too bad. Despite its flaws, Liberation's core gameplay is solid. The solid mechanics do make up for the gimmicks and lackluster story. The gameplay for Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation gets a 7 on 10. Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation is a decent game, but not a must-have on Vita. There is a lot of potential here for an amazing game, but it is brought down by a myriad of technical issues and design choices. I am looking forward to Ubisoft's potential second effort on Vita, and I do hope that they address the issues that were present in this game. Overall, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation gets a 6.5 on 10.